Environment um, Subcommittee meeting for the, for the 8th of August. So now um, Chris is going to um, lead us through our um, a discussion on our climate change and resilience strategy think tank. Um, she very kindly um, sent us some information last night and hopefully you've had a chance to read that. If not, I'm sure that we will be informed um, in due course. So over to Chris, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, just to note that um, I've also got Doug Simpson um, with me who um, is going to talk to you a bit about, um, uh, I guess, our proposal to you today. I, I do want to just set the scene to say this is the first of several conversations that we're going to have. Um, and what we're really looking um, to chat to you today about is some of the substantive components um, that we think are important to work through around the development of a terms of reference for standing up the think tank. Um, on that basis, we haven't proposed to um, um, put recommendations on the table today because we will be talking more to you about it. So we're asking you to give us some feedback to shape what will come back to you. Um, and the intention is that um, we will work with you to land a terms of reference that would go up to the um, soft committee, so the, the strategy ops and finance committee. So just to let you know where it's heading, um, and we will talk a bit more about next steps later on, but I think it's useful to just put that out there as, as a starting sort of context for you. Um, and I think maybe to share that um, the social subcommittee has also set up not a think tank, they're calling this, um, um, uh, um, I, I guess, a, a panel, but that's the Capity um, Health Advisory Group. And the way that that's worked is um, the social subcommittee has done just what you're doing today, giving some input and feedback, and then um, uh, also indicated who might be relevant um, for the discussion, um, because there were existing um, people and groups in place, and then letting those people come together to also inform the shaping of the terms of reference before it goes back up. So, so we're going through a similar process on that at the moment. Um, so I just wanted to share that, that intention and that it aligns to the way that we're doing things in other spaces. Um, so I am going to start off by giving a bit of background. Um, and for some of you, that'll be really familiar, but I think it's important we're in the same headspace. Um, we're proposing that we'll just step through the presentation and then um, hand back to the chair um, to get into some question time, if that sounds okay. Great. Yeah. Uh oh, I've got two things going. Right. Um, so um, we just wanted to take a step back out for a second so that we're in the same headspace. So if we look at New Zealand as a whole, um, this is stuff you know, but just to reiterate that um, you know that per capita our emissions are amongst the highest in the world. Um, you know that there are net zero emissions um, targets in place um, at a national level, and, and you can see them there. I just want to recap and state that you also know um, that we have declared a climate um, emergency in this district, that we have a climate emergency framework in place that was uh, released in July 2021 to respond to that declaration, and you know um, uh, that in September 22, we went out and surveyed people, and two-thirds of survey respondents said that they supported um, uh, setting a district-wide emission reduction target. 75% um, of those people said they were concerned or very concerned about climate change. And we think that is just important to set as um, some opening context for you. Because um, now we want to just talk a little bit about council resolutions. Actually, since you've been here, um, so in March, we had a briefing on developing a climate strategy and um, councils and actually community board chairs were part of that as well, resolved to set a district emissions reduction target in line with those national targets. Um, and I know Sophie, you're going to say to me, Chris, no more than, we need to be aspirational. Um, but the point is that we said we're going to do it. Um, and that would be part of the conversation that we're having now. So I just wanted to make sure that we had said that formally and publicly in this forum. So we said we're going to work on it alongside the development of our climate 
change and resilience strategy because whilst we can be aspirational, we also want to be clear about the things that we will prioritise and progress um, as we set priorities within our strategy. Um, and so we are proposing that you will formally release the actual level in December along with the straw person, so the substance of your strategy that's going to be brought through this forum. Um, and but the reason for that is because we do want to outline some practical pathways for driving change at a district level. Um, it was agreed that you would um, you think it would be useful to establish a think tank to support the development of that work. So that, that's where the think tank sits. Um, I also just want to note, and on the 13th of July, uh, Strategy Ops and Finance Committee um, endorsed changes to the policy work program that includes the development of those strategies. So there's two, the climate and resilience strategy and the environment strategy. A work on those strategies going to be progressed through to December with you in this forum. Um, following which um, we will be using our engagement hub that you're familiar with um, and through um, our vision cavity discussions to, to see what people think and get their input and feedback about what you're proposing will be the priorities. Um, and then we'd be looking to finalise all of this in about May 24. And the good thing about that is that uh, we've had feedback before that we set up strategies, but there's no funding for them. Um, by doing it this way, it will align to the engagement with the long-term plan. Um, and we'll be looking to make sure that we are putting into the long-term plan the things that are needed in the next three years to bring to life what you're setting out. Um, so we are going to be talking about the scope principles and priorities for each strategy with you in particular between September and November. And that, I just want to be clear, for us, that is the substantive components of those strategies. It's really getting under the hood of what's important, and that's what we want to do. Um, out the back of that, obviously, eventually some formal documents will be um, tabled, um, but we wanted to make sure that you've had a chance to really... Um, inform and um, uh, shape uh, the substance. Um, so that's kind of the context that we're heading into as we think about the think tank itself. So I'm going to pass on to Doug. Okay. Thank you, Chris, and morning, everyone. Um, I'm Doug Simpson. I'm leading the Climate and Resilience Strategy. Um, if I may, through Madam Chair, I was going to summarise some of the discussion we had at a very robust um, council session on the 18th of July, which I think just about everyone in this room was was part of, uh, recognised some familiar faces. So if I may, I was going to summarise the key measures that came out in terms of how we should go about setting up this uh, think tank to inform, largely to inform and advise on the climate and resilience strategy, and then talk a bit about the membership and might, what that might look like. We had some good ideas around that, where we might land. So I've just got a couple of slides on that. Um, so it's a chance just to relay back what that discussion was, to check that that was indeed correct, and then really to move things forward to, right, we need to start getting the terms of reference drawn up, get some agreements on that, and then get a meeting in the diary for the, for the think tank to come together. Um, so that's what I'm looking to do um, over the next two, two slides. Um, okay, so... So first of all... Um, we talked, uh, we, we had a, some good robust table discussion around what is the purpose of this think tank, what is there to do, um, given that we've got uh, this committee already in place. And really, there was a lot of discussion, but we landed on, I think, two key points. One was around, it's there to advise, to advise and inform, particularly on the key problems or key, key areas of focus that we can take from the community that they want their council to focus on in their response to climate change. Um, and that's a role for both council, but also other members of the community, but also beyond council as well, the Greater Wellington Council and also government. Um, and also to, to change some of the things around the way we do things, the challenging orthodoxy, and actually looking at different ways of doing things. And we had a discussion earlier in the, in the meeting around what should the council be funding or doing. Um, so that, that, that is up for grabs, um, really, in, in, the, in the sense of what does the community want us to, to do. And we've already had a lot of discussion with them, but it's a chance now to really sort of get a bit deeper and actually focus on some specific pathways and activities. So um, we talked about think tank deliverables, what this group would actually do, um, and really is that advisory informing group 
um, where they'll be giving us ideas around what are the priorities, what are important to them for action on climate, um, to support some of the things that we've come forward with, like we've obviously leading uh, for, for a while now, and you've heard the work that Minka has done before. Work is already underway, so we're not starting from a clean slate, but really is it's a chance to, to inform what we want to focus on now. Um, and some of the practical things that our community partners can do, we already know we have some active members in the group, sorry, in the community that are already doing some great things. How can we harness their energy and, and make sure that gets tapped into our strategy? Um, and also to, to, to bring forward those different views um, from the community in a way that perhaps we, we, we haven't done as well before or, or could do a bit differently. So by having this think tank group, we, we have that chance to engage um, in a bit more of a deeper way. But bearing in mind that we are need to develop the strategy at pace. We are, Chris mentioned the outline that we need to, to get something in front of um, our strategy and operations finance committee in December. So having that sort of nimble management to make sure we get what we need from the group, uh, that it's genuine and, and useful, um, but allows us to progress on um, on this on this timetable. So that was the, the, the focus really around purpose and deliverables. I can pause now if anyone wants to take any question, take any questions or have any thoughts. Complete, complete and crack on. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, so then membership. This was a fairly um, this was probably the most enjoyable part of the discussion I found at the council session on, on the 18th of July, um, whereby <laughs> thanks, Chris, whereby. Um, I believe we set around having some sort of balance of community member representation, individuals, um, and also uh, balance with some existing community group or representatives from existing community groups. And we've, 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 we work with some already, some will be very familiar to, to you, um, uh, Low Carbon Capity and the Capity Climate Change Action Group and Energize, OTAC in particular, were ones that were voiced. Um, but then also given the opportunity to the community to, to come forward um, with um, engaged and interested people, really, so not experts, but so we have that balance of experts, um, but also um, in, uh, interested and engaged residents and Mana Whenua representation. So the idea would be that we would put an expression out of interest to advertise that interest to, to the community, to bring on board um, community members, and then to shoulder tap those, those community groups that I spoke about to see if they'll be interested to put forward a representative. Um, there was a lot of talk about numbers. Um, and I'm not sure we landed on a, on, a, on a finite number, but I think personally, I think somewhere around 10, a maximum of 10 people will be a good manageable group. So if I can just put that down as a marker um, to try and uh, to get some management, but also to, to give us that, uh, to do this in a timely way. And then the next, the, the idea also was that, um, I think Councillor Hanford, this is your idea, to sort of see it as a testing ground for informing other processes and procedures and projects that we do. So it could be used to inform the environment strategy as a next step, depending how this this first sort of step went. So I'll just pause there, Councillor Warwick. I just wanted to ask, one of the things at the CWB committee or advisory group is that there's an opportunity for people from outside that group to talk to the committee or the advisory group before meetings and I think that's really important because otherwise you may get people who have one line of thought and it, it would be good to have the opportunity with whatever structure you have that there is, you know, an ability for others to have input. Yeah, I, I thought I just might note that with the Capity Health Advisory Group, there are, uh, there are, of course, other groups in the community interested in health. And in fact, we bought um, Smoke Free and the public, um, um, uh, National Public Health Service um, in, in our last meeting, um, outside of anything that... Um, CAG is doing um, because um, we're recognising the important importance of the ecosystem. So um, that is one of the things that we think is an important focus, and we'll talk to you about shortly um, when we get to the, the, the sort of scope um, of the climate and resilience strategy of being able to talk about the ecosystem we have here and, and who is um, important and that we need to make sure that we're talking to. Um, uh, I'll hand back to Doug. <laughs> Okay, so um, that takes the final slide, which is really the next steps that we're proposing. Um, and this is really the discussion part, I suppose, is around agreeing the key elements uh, for the think tank in terms of developing the terms of reference. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm glad Councillor Warwick mentioned the CWV advisory group because I'm looking to mirror, I was looking to mirror the terms of reference off that group. Um, I think it looks it looks fairly similar in terms of what, that, what it's trying to achieve in terms of deliverables being informing 
what our what our output is for the strategy, informing our priorities, informing our focus areas. Um, so that's that's that is an, uh, that's the avenue that I'm looking to to, to mirror off at the moment, uh, unless obviously the uh, the group thinks otherwise. Um, and from that point, then to round robin the terms of reference to this group to agree uh, to agree its members and its and its terms, um, and then we have to get the group um, formally ratified through through the Strategy um, Operations and Finance Committee. So we would take that, we would look for, for this committee to, to back, uh, to sponsor the uh, the terms of reference that we're putting forward, um, and for the chair of, of, of uh, for Madam Chair to present the terms of reference to the, the next um, Strategy Operations and Growth, uh, sorry, Operations and Finance meeting. Uh, it will actually it would be the 14th September meeting because I think we're a bit tight to make the 24th of August meeting, um, and then in parallel we can get work underway to, to set the group up and send out invites um, just before we get that decision. Um, but we would very much like to, to get that think tank first meeting in the diary as soon as possible, and we're looking at sometime in, uh, in uh, probably September, but it's probably more likely October, barring the outcome of the um, of the strategy, strategy operations and finance committee decision um, on the 14th of September. So I'll pause there and... Uh, um, just a note, uh, um, back to you, um, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Doug and Chris, for giving us an oversight um, for where we're heading. So what we'll do now is take questions, comments, um, keep them reasonably brief if you can, and um, we'll start off with Shelley. Thank you. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> look, I just wondered if you'd give any, any consideration to having, to establishing a community of interest. So, um, uh, to sit alongside the think tank. So, uh, when we did the economic development strategy refresh a few years back, that worked really well. So, we had like a wide group where we brainstormed stuff in a big workshop scenario with lots of people who had an interest in economic development. Then we had a smaller group of about 10 people that actually crunched through and, and you know put stuff together and debated it and tossed it around and then went back out to the wider group. And I just think in terms of community engagement, it's a, a much more powerful way to go because all these people are going to put their hands up to express interest. I can imagine you're going to get bombarded with expressions of interest. And we don't want to you know, turn those people away but we could set up a community of interest. Uh, and that could even be online as well or whatever, um, uh, as well as running workshops and you know, just sort of like having, you know, just facilitated sessions where you break people up into groups and they just brainstorm and you know, we condense everything back down again. To me it would be, I think it would be, it would add another dimension to it if we could tack that on. So I just wonder, you know, what do you think about that? Um, if I may, um, I'll say, um, no, we hadn't specifically thought of the community of interest, um, but happy to take that on board, um, uh, because I, I think you're right, there will be a lot of interest, so we might um, um, go back to the ranches, I often say, um, and, and, and just work through what that might look like, so when we come back to you, we, we can think about um, uh, how we'd make that work, uh, particularly, uh, through the time frame that we have. Um, yeah. Thank you so much, Chair. Um, lovely presentation. Thank you very much. Very clear. Um, just want to go back to the first slide where you um, talk on um, the purpose or um, uh, what, how did you describe it? The, the think tank purpose, yes. And it's, you state you advise on how to engage communities on key problems. And the second is challenging orthodoxy. And I think this is really important work. And so thank you for proposing this. My questions, I have three questions, which relate to how this is presented externally um, to our community um, alongside processes like, such as Takatai Kapiti, et cetera, which <laughs> I was going to bring up. Um, and then the flip side of that internally. So how does this think tank relate to things something like the technical advisory group for the coastal adaptation pla panel under? And, and be interesting to, very initial thinking on that. And then my third point is, so after May 2024, then what? 
uh, because all these processes come together as submissions for the long-term plan in May 2024. How does it, how does it, it, it link across both internally and yeah. externally, and how does it move forward? Uh, great to have some more great. information. Great, and I, I might start with that point first. Um, the reason that we're focused on substance through to December this year is, to be fair, that is what is going to drop into the long-term plan. So we, um, in this part of, well, this side of Christmas, are very much focusing on um, putting the strategic intentions that will sit across, um, or that will focus the long-term plan and our funding and activity uh, for the next three years. Um, uh, we have our council priorities, and one of those things is setting up this climate strategy and so that we're clear on what we think will be driving, um, remembering that we already have some things underway, which I, I think um, Doug had mentioned and, and Ninka and the, and the team have presented to you. Um, so there are some things already on the roadmap. Um, some of the work we need to do or might need to do might actually be to develop some more things to understand what's next, um, um, particularly in that district-wide um, space. Um, so, so the timeframes line up is what I want to say to you. The reason that we want to do a release in May 24 is because decisions will have been made on the long-term plan and we'd like those things to line up so that um, actually the decisions and choices that are made for at least the short term, uh, we're not over-promising in a strategy that we're going to do stuff that actually we haven't funded. So as to just close the loop on that point, that if we don't fund the aspiration, we're not going to promise to do stuff because I think that's where we get in trouble with the community. Um, uh, so, so that's one point. Um, I think um, you'd ask how this think tank might line up with um, some of the existing things already underway, like Takutai Kapiti. I think Takutai Kapiti um, was set up and has, well, was established for a set purpose, and it has an end date. I think uh, the think tank we're setting up, um, Councillor Coe quite rightly said, even with the community of interest, that really we're trying to establish something that has a longer, um, uh, well, a longer term um, and, and a wider scope than what has been set for Takutai Kapiti. Um, so Takutai Kapiti will close. Um, its life ends in, um, uh, next year once it has completed the work that it was asked, that, you know, the terms of reference has asked it to do. Um, and this tank tank will be set up just to get across general climate change issues. So um, that will include things from mitigation, um, adaptation, where it becomes appropriate to talk about that, um, resilience and, and other issues that will, will come through. Um, Doug did mention that there was conversation about whether this um, think tank could get across environmental issues. I do just want to note, back to the idea of ecosystems, that there are extensive things underway in the environmental space, such as the Capiti Flight Tour. Um, we will be looking to work alongside those, not replace them. So um, it'll be really key, it'll be really important that we are wanting to understand those ecosystems that exist and, and how the different I call them players, um, sit alongside each other. And it will change over time. And so it will be when is it the right time to maybe lean into some stuff. Um, uh, well, that would be my position on those things at the moment. So thank you. Um, thank you for that, Chris. So now we'll go on to Glenn, who's online, patiently waiting with his hand up. Oh, actually, are you... May be in the wrong order, but um, you yeah. have a chance. Uh, uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, great, thanks. Um, yeah, this is awesome uh, stuff, Doug and Chris. Good work, and I think it will have some um, some great benefits down the track. I just had a question though around, and Chris was sort of alluded to in your preamble just um, just then, around. I think we need to be very very clear um, around what. Uh, climate change issues are uh, in this think tank um, and not getting waylaid into environmental or sustainability issues. Um, so what, what were you thinking, Doug, around the terms of reference? Is it going to be really tight or are you going to leave it a little bit open? 
yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Councillor. I think I would like to keep it quite tight to you know, the themes that Chris was talking about about mitigation, adaptation, yeah. transition. Then we've got this recovery theme, which is very important too. I think so. You're right. We need to we need to, to, to put a boundary around where the discussion takes us, and otherwise we'll start getting into a strategy which becomes a strategy for everything. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would like to set it quite tight uh, at this point. I really want to focus on it's, it's the initial meeting anyway is, is, is to get that input on the priorities and focus focus areas and the, and the pathways that that to me is a really the essence of what we want to engage this group on um, because they will already be doing some great stuff in their capacity too that we could build on too I want to sort of be able to harvest that in the session but they're absolutely right I think we need to sort of build a bit of a tight boundary around what we're asking this group to do and I might just uh, yeah, it's awesome I'm, I'm and just, just one more one more question, uh, or comment or question, uh, it's probably both, is uh, I'd like to see, um, in terms of what it's trying to achieve, is having some really smart objectives um, that are uh, achievable, or um, at least working towards being achievable. And I think we've seen in some of the space in the report, um, even today in this committee, is that uh, we start talking about things that aren't achievable, aren't remotely achievable, and we're not trying to actually achieve them, but but we're saying um, we're putting recommendations and noting forward. And I um, just hark back to being EV, EV only by 2026, when really the, the council has no intent of being EV uh, by 2026 or fossil free gas by 2025. So um, in terms of the, the think tank smart objectives, I'd really like to um, have some really good thought around uh, if it's going to have worth in those targets or what it's trying to achieve are actually achievable and sensible. Uh, just thoughts on that, Doug? Um, can, I, can, I ju can I just know, um, I feel um, the points you're raising around smart objectives might fit into the strategies themselves, um, but would imagine that the think tank gave us advice on that. Um, so absolutely on the money and we would definitely be looking to get their input on that. I also do want to know just around the scope of this think tank, we will be coming back to you at the next CES meeting with, um, uh, well, really the question around scope. Um, and um, starting to talk about priorities for those um, two strategies. And so I think the timeframes for landing the terms of reference alongside that discussion is important because I would hazard a guess that this committee should provide some guidance to the um, think tank rather than the think tank tell you what its scope is. Um, uh, and, and I just want to note that um, I keep using the example of CAG for the social subcommittee. That's what we've done there. So they haven't determined their scope. We've started with the scope and then they've um, broadened out from that about how they deliver it against that. So um, the reason we'd suggest that is because um, we, we want to make sure that it's an effective group and they have clarity on what you want them to do um, so that we're focusing on the right stuff going forward. Right. So, um, awesome, and thank you. Cheers, that's it for me. Um, good work. I, I like it. Thanks. So if I can just make a comment before I go to Christian. So I thank you. I appreciate your comments, um, Glenn. I, I suppose I just want to um, make the comment that I think, you know, this is a think tank and all, all comments are welcome at this point in time. And, you know, given time, then we will um, narrow down wherever we're going to go. So um, no comments, a bad comment. Thank you. Um, pass, on pass on to you now, um, Christian. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for the presentation. Um, there's been quite a bit of discussion about like the role's responsibility and where this fits in with other people. And uh, my question then is, do you see this as a, a uh, an entity that will be given a brief by perhaps this committee, perhaps another committee, perhaps full council to say, this is our emissions reductions target. We want your role, your, your brief is to break that down and come back to us with advice on how that can practically be met. Is, is, that, the, is that the vision? I, I think, um, I'm gonna say it this way. If part of our work in our climate strategy, our climate resilience strategy, is to do that and we have them working alongside us 
um, to inform the development of the strategy, then yes. Okay. Um, my next question is... So can I just add to that? Sorry. Just to add to that. I think, I think what I'm quite interested in is, is actually understanding what, what we can expect and demand of, of, of others to try and achieve our targets. So we're doing some quite interesting modelling internally around what's needed to get down our emissions down to achieve our, mm. our regional target and then what is the gap and who should be calling who should we be calling on to help us address that gap, whether it's government action or what can we draw more on from the community, what are they prepared to do? So I think that's where I'd, I'd entertain that discussion as opposed to sort of defining scenarios of where to go. I think it'd be more I'd be more interested, I think it'd be more valuable to help inform what's needed to fill some of those gaps to get down to that emission target that we've uh, that we've now set ourselves. Okay. So my next question is, um, you've spoken uh, about the types of people that would be on it from our community, um, and what do you see the role of specific subject matter experts? So you might talk to the, the lead of the vehicle electrification project at ECA, or you might speak to um, another council about what they've done to get their pools off gas. Would, would you see them as sort of um, providing expert input to to the to the group on an invited basis? I mean, not I don't expect someone from a different council is going to sit on the think tank. That that, does, that doesn't seem to be correct. I, I think they may be. Um, of course, we're going to explore. But um, Councillor Coe had mentioned a community of interest, and it okay. might be as part of the community interest that um, we're thinking of our community, but also um, more broadly than that. As part of what we usually do, we do link in to, to and, and you know this, um, actually, Christian, we, we um, link into other councils. So, so of course, we would be looking to feed back those kinds of comparisons, ideas, and, 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 and thinking to the information that comes back to you. Okay. And my, my third question, um, which might be a challenging one to answer, is that um, with regard to some of the emissions reduction projects that, or you, when you look at the source of council commission em emissions, Officials have been clear in briefings and, and, and sat in that, at, at your table there that, no, this is what's in the LTP, this is what's in the strategy, this is what we're going to do. And to what extent is, are those predetermined actions that are written down at the moment up for being challenged, up for being accelerated, or for doing things differently? Um, I mean, the short answer to that, Christian, is... Uh, currently, we are delivering on, on our um, uh, LTP that was um, endorsed by the previous council. So we're in our final year of the LTP and continuing to live against that, which is um, the commentary you'll be hearing from staff. Um, we are about to head into our next LTP. Okay. And there's plenty of opportunity for us to think about what is important to be progressing through our next LTP in the space. And, and I um, did make the comment that um, alongside the development of the strategy, we're looking at the priorities, which we hope help provide a bit of an umbrella for focus. And we would propose that that's in two ways. Um, one is, of course, um, operationally. Um, and, and Ninka and team have been talking a bit about uh, already the work we're doing around our operations and what we can achieve and the focus. Um, and it may be, well be that there's more to consider. Um, but in the district space, um, I think Doug was alluding to the fact that not all of the things that need to happen in our district are things that council will do. And so part of what we want to think about is what is our role in advocating um, and um, enabling and supporting and educating a range of ways to get different, I keep calling them players, but people, entities or organisations that are important for this um, this mahi, this challenge, to be in the same place to make stuff happen. So um, it'll be saying, what do we need to enable that? Um, and we'll be putting some things towards, um, I guess this forum first, and then um, to council to say, from our end, this is what we think we need in the LTP for the next three years to make that happen. You'll be aware that, um, well, I know you're aware because we just talked about it, Vision Capity, I use every moment to talk about it. Um, uh, that um, actually that's the other mechanism because in the longer term we need to also think about what are the bigger shifts that we might want to make and so there's probably two bites at the cherry so to speak 
um, to set that direction. So the short term would be our long term plan and the longer term, which might have bigger shifts that we think need to happen, might be where we're looking to get some, some buy in from our community about what are the things that we think are really meaningful to do because um, this is a long term game. It isn't about the ne just the next three years, it's longer than that. Um, and I think that's the important thing to, to keep our sort of line of sight on. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move on to Simon. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hey, thanks, Chris and Doug. Um, look, I really, really um, support this initiative, um, exactly what we need. The comments that I have is out of this committee is going to be some operational um, support requirements. So one thing that I'm um, observing at the moment is that every time um, Nick has um, spoken, she has always said that we don't have enough resource in our team to fund the research required. And if we are in a climate emergency, I believe we need to actually support this team and our research so that we can make credible decisions around how we can reduce our emissions or how we can address climate change <laughs> and resiliency. So um, I would like to see um, or question being as well, are we taking into account the number of FTE we're going to generate from this if we are funding our climate uh, emergency team properly, if we are getting the right amount of research supported by this council, and, um, and are there specific projects which are going to come from this that if we don't want to leave for the next LTP, we actually want to have funding going on from this point of view. Um, And also including the uh, you know the wider community as well because I don't think we're going to have this strategy session and say cool we've done all the work we know exactly what we need to do this is going to be an ongoing thing we don't yet know how to solve the problems and and are we actually also including our um, s social sustainability committee because a lot of the things which we need to change in the community is not only education but it's going to impact everyone socially as well. Mm. Uh, if I may, I'm just going to channel um, the chief. Darren Edwards um, for a moment um, to say that um, I think he has um, openly advised you that at the moment, um, particularly with the fact that we have um, three waters transition front of mind, we're considering um, how we how we organised and set up as um, as an operational um, unit to make sure that we have the right people in the right place to get the things done that you think is important and the community thinks is important. And as part of that, um, we will be considering what resource um, we need to make sure that we can do things in, in the climate, the environment and other spaces. So um, that will require looking across all things that we're doing. So um, I, we are talking about climate change now. Um, soon we'll be talking to you about the environment. I can talk to you about health, housing, education, a bunch of areas where um, economic development, as I have Councillor Co sitting next to me, um, and Doug and I, um, just to say that there's a range of things where we want to do things and um, what we want to be able to present back to you is what our role is, um, what the priorities are across those. And you will essentially need to, in places, make trade-off call Mm. calls about what needs to happen in the short term, the medium term and the long term to achieve, um, back to my vision capacity statements, um, the, the, the um, aspirations for capita um, now and into the future. So yes, we will be putting things on the table, but I just want to say that we um, are also putting alongside those, there will be need to be a call for trade-offs. Understood. And if I may, through the chair, just endorse that, but actually, in a sense, you've done some of the groundwork already with your top 10 priorities. Yeah. Notwithstanding that's a, a shorter term vision, but I absolutely endorse what Chris is saying, and I, I mentioned it earlier in this meeting, um, it, it will be a, a, a tough job for us to get the right package in front of you, mm. but an even tougher job for you as elected members bal balancing those trade-offs, um, and, and not unique to this council. It'll be the same up and down the country, but uh, that's that's the challenge, but the opportunity of the LTP. Excellent. Thank you. I think the only other thing that I do want to say to you is one element that um, is uh, referred to in our council priorities 
um, but we haven't yet worked through with you, is um, we will need to manage within an envelope that's acceptable to, to the community around the impact for rates. Mm. There's also an opportunity for us to be talking to you about how we source um, additional revenue through other sources um, and uh, to support that aspiration. So um, there, there's two component parts to that. Um, we won't have landed um, those future revenue sources by the time we land this LTP, but it's our intention to say during the course of the next couple of years that we will be pursuing that so that there's an opportunity for us to go, not just in the three years but longer, how do we get more bang for buck for this community to make sure that we can do the things that matter mm -hmm. and make a difference? So so um, from, I guess from our SLT I can say to you we're committed to doing that and um, we are definitely going to be coming back to you to talk about it more and we know that um, you know, our, amongst our top ten priorities, climate change, re responding to that, resilience and the environment are up there. So this is a focus for us, and we are going to look to to do our best to prioritise our effort and energy towards those things. Wonderful, thank you. Um, so one thing I've got written down here is also the funding of strategy versus outcomes. Um, is this panel also going to advise on? the funding required for advisory panels to continue on in future just to keep that function working as opposed to specific projects and outcomes? We will have to have a conversation with you around the setup for a think tank mm. because I think the idea was that it was um, it had a voluntary component to it mm. of bringing people together. Um, so that it was a way to harvest um, uh, support and momentum in the community. Um, and, and the reason that we were trying to look at a mix of community members and existing groups is because those groups are set up to do things already. Um, so it may be that the think tank has um, advice to provide you on that, um, which we would look to come back on at this stage. Um, we're at the very, very early um steps, I guess, of setting up a range of panels, think tanks, or other groups mm -hmm. across a variety of areas. And I do know that if Janice was here, she would say to you today that we are proposing to do a bit of a review around all of the groups that we have mm -hmm. to make sure that they're set up in a fair and equi equitable way. So um, do acknowledge that there seems to be a, a variety of things happening at the moment. So we would come back with advice. It may not be specifically through this think tank that that emerges though, it might be something that we're organisationally doing and providing advice back, um, even to perhaps strategy ops and finance. Lovely. Thank you, Chris. Thanks, Madam Chair. Thanks, Simon. So I'll move on to um, Sophie. Yeah, cool. Thank you so much for working with us up and also for the opportunity to kind of have a discussion about um, what you've now reported back. It's really, really is appreciated. Um, and doing so at pace, thank you for, for that as well. Um, so I would come back to one of the points on slide, oh, slide four um, around in the briefing of March 2023 where we resolved to set a district-wide emissions reduction target in line with national targets. I don't know if you mentioned that, Chris, but um, I just want to make it really... Uh, yeah, I guess I just want to be really clear or um, ask the question as to uh, where where you feel that we're at in terms of wanting to be ambitious and, and ahead of the curve and aspirational, and if there's anything else we um, we can do to help make that super clear. The reason Side that Malty, no, that's okay. I feel like the reason that I wanted to put this in the briefing today was to ensure that you know that we've heard you. So um, you've been really clear about the fact that we are, in fact, publicly acknowledging we're doing this. We are lined up to support that. So the reason today I wanted to make sure we took a back, step back was just to acknowledge um, everything we're doing is lined up to the direction you've already given us. So um, we'll be coming back to you on that. Um, um, and um, the level of which, at which that's set will be agreed through this mechanism. So um, yep. I was just really acknowledging um, that uh, when I looked back over documentation, 
I couldn't see that we had a public document which acknowledged this. So okay. I wanted to acknowledge the point that this had been agreed. Okay, cool. No, that's that's really, that helps make it clear. Because I think in the briefing, which as you say, it was a briefing, there was a discussion about um, wanting to potentially be more ambitious than we have in the past, which is a really great thing. Um, so, But because we don't have, as you say, a public kind of declaration of that to this point, because we haven't set the target within the strategy, that, yeah, that you're just basing that off of, public information that already exists, but that, yep, that clarifies that point. Um, the other question that I had was around the strategy itself and how, how this fits into it, and it's, yeah, kind of those terms of reference and getting really clear on the purpose of the think tank. I know when we had the breakout discussions, there was a little bit of, it wasn't tension, but it was like we were trying to hold space for almost like what you were saying, Doug, a lot of different things within the same conversation, and what I was finding is that Adaptation was taking up a whole lot of space in the conversation and without doubting for a second that it's vital for our district to think about, considering we've got 40 kilometres of coastline, we also have to think about the kind of upstream things that we can do to stop the problem from getting worse and also to act on those co-benefits that Christian was talking about in relation to an earlier item on our agenda. So my understanding of, of the purpose of both the strategy and the think tank is to be as focused as possible as we can be on emissions reduction while acknowledging we've got Takutai Kapiti as a kind of coastal adaptation process in train. Um, and, oh, <laughs> the bus. yeah, the bus. So, and the other thing as well was around the emissions reduction target and really kind of honing in on that district-wide emissions as, um, as, as the strategy being the main opportunity to kind of leverage and, and catalyze those things. So I guess I want to, just kind of challenge how much we're trying to do with one thing and getting really clear on exactly what the purpose is so we don't jump into it and then we've got people who are under the impression that this is going to be about adaptation when, as you said, we've got to talk about the transition and we've got to give some voice to resilience within our climate response more broadly. But I just see a big, I just see a risk and I'm just wondering how we get more clear. So I'll pass that question over. <laughs> Sorry, it's a long-winded one, but... Thank you. So I'll start with that. Thanks, Councillor Hanson. I think well, the, the quick solution was we found that day was that we changed that we, well, we reiterated the, the correct title of the strategy to climate and resilience strategy because I think mm -hmm. having climate resilience it did t channel the, the discussion and brought you down a bit more of a, an adaptation focus than we had planned. So, um, but to give you assurance, I'm absolutely committed to make sure that we are focusing on mitigation and transition. Yeah. Um, hugely, that that is, and we've we've got we've got a good base. We've got a good corporate leadership. We, we can, we're can. we leading by example from the work that Minka's team has already done to show that we have made huge strides, I think, in reducing our own carbon footprint. So we can go out with some credibility to the community and say, hey, look, we've done it within our own house. What else can you do? Mm. Um, and and I'll, I'll be really interested to see where the focus the communities think we should be should be on. Is it on yeah. mitigation and transition, or should we go knee-deep in, 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 in that adaptation space? So I think we need to be showing that we are clear on mitigation that is a priority and that we're also doing things to help in that transition to a low carbon life. So I really want to have that equal balance okay. uh, between yep. the three. I, I just want to add that um, one of the things that we have talked about um, in the background, and if you ever get a chance to come into my office, you'll see a bunch of scribbles on a whiteboard around um, the climate change and resilience strategy. And one of the things that we had had purposely done is put a circle around adaptation and said it was part of a second phase conversation mm -hmm. and acknowledgement that Takutai Kapiti is underway. We are not going to try and go in front of that discussion. Yeah. Yeah. We already um, have, um, um, I'll say in this context, we have set up a process to engage the community through a number of mechanisms on that topic, we're not going to try and overtake that. Mm. Um, so um, that, that's not to say that we ignore it, um, but we um, would look for a time and place and space to appropriately bring in the decisions that are made. So um, right. council is making a decision on that next year. Mm -hmm. um, there'll also be the opportunity for coastal plan, um, district plan changes that mm. will flow through. Mm. Um, we aren't going to look to supersede 
those um, decision points, we know that they are in train. So um, I just wanted to note that because I think that's important context. Yeah, yeah, that's really helpful. So in the longer run, ultimately, everything will be folded into this. But if initially we're quite focused on, we've we've said that we want to set a district-wide emissions reduction target, that we want to mobilise the community around that, we want to be doing everything that we can in-house and, and you know, using the levers that we have in the community to make that happen, and that that's the initial focus. I mean, I think in the discussion, in the briefing, I brought up Wellington City Council's kind of first to zero, which is very, um, it's very clear that they're looking to turn the tap off, that that's the motivation. And I think we have to... Um, I, I appreciate getting the community in the room and saying, how do you think we should use this opportunity to have a climate strategy? But I also think there has to be a point where we say that we want to take some leadership on this. And that looks like being very intentional about why we're setting up what we're setting up and what it's for. Um, so I'll leave that there, I think. And I just had one other question. Can I, may I say, Sophie, okay. oh, yeah. yes, um, to your point. To also note, though, we are going to talk to you about recovery um, mm -hmm. and, and, and the, a different way of thinking about resilience from the perspective that we have all just watched a bunch of severe weather events happen on the east coast and up north mm -hmm. and the devastation that has occurred um, as a result of those. Um, mm -hmm. And there's some debate as to whether some of that relates to environment <laughs> or, or climate. Um, um, but without getting into that, um, we think it's important that we have a discussion with you and the community about how we will respond to those kinds of events. So that's the other side of it. Yep. Um, if I was to be honest to say, um, you're going to see quite a strong push from us in that space mm. because we do not believe we have sufficient focus or plans in place for that today. Mm. Yeah, okay, cool. Sorry, I just have, is that okay, Madam Chair? Just one quick question. Yeah, yeah so um, just... Just to kind of get really clear on the timeline, I'm wondering whether it's possible for, I don't know, some sort of almost visual to be produced that just shows exactly like when the think tank will be in operation or when it's going to be set up and then when the when we're thinking the climate environment, the climate strategy stuff will begin and when it, just to kind of see visually how everything fits together, if that's possible. I don't want to create extra work, but if all the information's there. Yes, we can do that. that. Yeah, thank you. Cool, sorry, all the questions. So I think everyone has had a had a ask question. Uh, do you, uh, uh, sorry, you're, uh, I, I realise that you hadn't spoken, so I'll let you speak now because everyone else has had at least one turn. So I just had a point of clarification. Oh, if you've got room later, following on from what Councillor Cooper said. Yeah, I have some comments to make, but we'll we'll just go to Glenn first yeah. if that's okay. Yeah, yeah sure. <clears throat> yeah. Hey. Um. I'm just um, thinking about the membership of the think tank and how you know um, the selection is going to be because I'm reading here the, um, it seems to contradict itself slightly and it says the chair and co-chair will work to identify volunteers and then it will say that the selection should be open and fair with expression of advertised to attract volunteers. So they seem to contradict to each other. Or are you going to look for volunteers first and then the chair and that will pick them? Or how, how's it going to work? Sorry, that was meant to be, um, well, we, it was intended to be a simple statement that we're going to run a fair and um, transparent process using uh, expression of interest. Um, we're going to work with the chair and, and deputy to look at who was there and to identify and shortlist essentially. We were also acknowledging though that you have already indicated to us that there's some groups that we would shoulder tap and say, hey guys, we're doing this thing, we think it would be perfect for you. So it was kind of like a mixed approach, um, but we would be running the expression of interest. People would have to say that they wanted to be part of it. Um, we're, not, we're obviously not, not gonna force people, um, um, but it was more, we need a decision point. And so that's why we were saying that's how we would run that decision. Yeah. Um, so the chair and co-chair, they would be elected members? It would be of this committee. Of so this committee. Uh, effectively, um, Jocelyn and Sophie. Okay. And last question, just quickly. Um, do we think we've got time to get the, the think tab, uh, tank up and running for a first meeting in September or October to do the selection process? We're committed to doing so.
Yeah, so I'll, I'll um, have developed a few thoughts and, and, and potential questions given um, the presentation and the questions around the table here. So I suppose one of my questions, which is just following on what um, Sophie said in terms of, so this is actually climate and resilience. And to me, I hear what Sophie's saying, um, but, but I just want to understand the resilience side of it, because as you said, um, you know, if we have a major disaster, how well are we going to fare? Yeah, that's my first thought. Uh, yeah, and um, I feel that we are trying to, we're trying to put a balanced focus on the table because I feel that, um, you know, one of the things that um, Sophie's raising is that sometimes I think we can, uh, there's a lot of important issues, but we can dive into one issue in particular and not realise that the risk, the greatest risk that actually is posed for this district is not the one that we're focused on right now. It's the most immediate risk. So um, the reason that we've put resilience on the table in a different way than you may be used to when we talk about climate change. So yes, adaptation is important, but I think you will know that's a hundred year conversation. Um, we're talking about something around resilience and recovery. And in fact, I have I have James sitting next to me who 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 as our um, controller for response. And um, before we get to recovery, actually, is um, we need to be clear that we've had the right conversation with this community, um, so that we are ready if something happens. And and we are coming back to specifically have conversations around recovery. And just to say that we have been engaging with other parts of the country who have been literally knee deep in mud and water as a result of those events. And uh, I'm gonna say the traumatic stories that they're telling about the help you don't get. Um, and so that that's what we wanna talk to you about because um, um, that, that, I mean, Wairoa is uh, just a terrible story about the fact that they have people with no houses and no food and they were given to 150,000 from the government and that they are at the edge of their district and not getting help. And so it's just a small example, um, but government, central government is not funding existing issues. So if you are in an area with complex needs and existing issues, those will not be addressed through recovery. Uh, if you have people in your community that have no insurance or who are underinsured, they will not be covered. Um, the government is not is not is not covering those things. So, and obviously insurers won't because <laughs> obviously that's not covered. Um, so it's the how will we work with actually vulnerable parts of the community that we don't currently consider to be vulnerable. Um, so there's a whole range of things that we need to get across with you mm -hmm. so that we're having the right conversations with the right people. Um, and even you, you, your view of who needs to be involved in this conversation might change after that. So um, there might be other entities, uh, not-for-profits, um, 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 groups that we actually need to have more contact with. Uh, I can tell you right now, we need to be more engaged with central government um, so that those who are actually going to be, if there's a big event coming into this district, know us. There's a, there's a whole bunch of stuff that we need to do and be prepared for. And even you, what your roles are through this, and you um, are being ready to stand up in, in front areas um, to help our community. So um, I believe if you ask me what our biggest threat, other than the fact that we obviously need to focus on um, emissions and reducing those, I would say to you that that is one of the things that I think we need to prepare for more urgently than anything else in this district. So we are bringing that to you. It is a little bit different to what you might have thought was coming your way, um, but we've just realised that this is um, uh, this is going to be something that the whole of local government is having to get their heads around um, in a way that we never had to before. Mm -hmm. So thank you for the fact for Chris and I think you know given that conversation and about what I'm going to say next is that we are actually going to be really busy over the next few months um, you know putting this in place but it has to be done because if we are going to feed this into our long term plan we can't wait till May you know that conversation those conversations are starting in the next few months so I suppose what I just want to add to all that complexity is that you know. Um, 
going down this path, we can't do it in isolation. We've got to look at, you know, our climate. We've got to look, at, you know, the fact that we have got um, a substantial <coughs> amount of growth coming into our community. Um, we've got to look at our housing. So it's actually it's actually a, a much bigger picture that that all's got to um, link in together and work well together because what we potentially the last thing we want is for us to make certain decisions which are going to have a really negative impact somewhere down the line. Um, and to me, it's yeah, it, it's a big task. And I suppose to me, um, this is actually about um, you know this is actually. A, a, to me, a piece of work that is actually going to continue for a very long time. It's not a case of where, you know, we've done our job in, in May or December or whenever it is. Things are always going to come up and, you know, we will have um, outcomes that we want to ensure actually are put in place and whether they're short-term ones and long-term ones. And I suppose the other thing too was, I was brought up, Doug made the comment about potentially modelling this around the CWB and then Liz has made the comment about community groups. Mm -hmm. And I suppose, um, I think a lot of thought needs to be put around how this is set up because I know, you know, being on the CWB in the <coughs> past, um, there are a lot of community groups where you have, um, a, you know, two representatives on that CWB, but they actually represent a lot of people. And it's actually ensuring that, you know, maybe you can go down that path, but ensuring that, pardon? Yeah, but, but ensuring that there aren't any gaps in, in, I suppose, the areas that our scope that we want to work in. If I may, Jenna, uh, uh, I was going to speak about the Mayor. Sorry, Jocelyn. Um, uh, the Mayor had said to me that she thought it was really important that as we're starting to roll out work that we're thinking about the interconnectedness between for want of better words, the outcomes that we're trying to drive. And so we can't look at one outcome in isolation. We um, And I'll give you an example um, with Liz here around economic development is there's opportunities in economic development to link into what we might want to achieve in the environmental climate change mm -hmm. space and recovery, actually. Um, we talk about tourism and a need for um, housing or space. And we also need that for recovery. And so it's the how do we put things in place that meet multiple objectives and whether that is one way that we think of prioritising what we do. So we won't be able to produce the things that this community needs if we're only focused on one thing going forward. I think that's the reality with the environment that we, like the context that we are operating in. So if I can just make one comment too. So we're going, we're doing this think tank for climate and resilience. We're also going to be having one for the environment. And, you know, there will be synergies there as well, which we need to consider. And I'm not sure how far behind um, this project, this this process, the, the climate mm. think tank, tank one is going to be as well. If I, if I may say, some of the conversation that we've had around the environment spaces, I did mention the Kapiti Whaitua, obviously, that's focused on our awa, our water. Um, uh, um, you are considering the PC2 recommendations this week. One of the um, recommendations in there is the idea of, um, I don't know that um, uh, uh, Rob is not here, but um, an urban panel. Um, is uh, an idea around um, essentially spatial planning, um, mm -hmm. uh, but making sure it's connected up to the right things. Um, so <coughs> it might be there's a need in that space to actually think about collectively what it is that we need to achieve and what the right um, conversations mm -hmm. are to have. Um, just to note, originally in the housing space, um, uh, uh, Councillor Halliday had been really keen to set up our housing panel but when we started to unpack and talk about it, we realised that it wasn't the right time to do that. And also we needed to think about what it was it that we were trying to achieve, what would be the purpose for it. So it might be is that we move forward a little bit more, that, that we get clarity on that when we start to see how those things fit together. So back to that word ecosystem, um, I think it's really important that we understand how those committees not only focus on an issue, but sit alongside each other to make sure that the committees that they report to or the work they inform is actually getting the best coverage that it can and not isolated advice because otherwise you're going to be asked to make competing decisions that don't make sense. 
So, so we want to make sure that we round that off for you. Thank you. So now, um, so Liz, um, I've got a quick point. back to you. Yeah, thank you. Look, I just wanted to, um, a point of clarification. So following on from what Councillor Cooper said, my understanding of a think tank is that it's no, hold bar no holds barred, and we're not talking about necessarily practicality of solutions. Uh, I just wanted to check that that is a correct understanding because, you know, if you think of Edward de Bono's six thinking hats, we want blue sky, no holds barred thinking, which probably then funnels into a process where we look at the practicality is of those solutions. But I think to lumber the practicality onto the think tank is going to constrain it. So am I, is that, am I correct in my thinking that we want, really want people to um, brainstorm, come up with innovative, off the wall, out of the box ideas that can then go into a process where they are examined in terms of practicality. Yeah, I think my, my view is, and, and, and Doug, happy for you to add to this, that my view is yes. Um, and then I think um, Sophie's earlier point about being aspirational um, and, and the idea um, to support that aspiration will require that thinking. Um, but then there is the practical, what can we do and what will others have to do? So we will get there, absolutely. And I, I feel like, um, and, and I know Doug wants to get into this, he, he's, he's dying to talk about um, strategies and implementation plans and the things that will actually come together as a package to drive change. Um, so um, it is a funnel. Um, and, and we're also looking at what is existing, what have we already covered, where are the gaps, and what else do we need to do? Um, and when is the other thing. Um, but, but I think there is also a conversation about bang for buck for the community. Um, the other thing that I think we're going to put on the table to you guys is whilst we acknowledge you do want to drive change, mm. do you get to a stage where essentially the, the, the marginal benefits you get um, really um, are, are minimal in terms of the cost that you're putting in? And so it's almost a question of what does good look like? Um, and then is it the other area? So sorry, I'm 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 just thinking. You've had a lot of conversation about organisationally what we're doing and how we're driving towards regional and national targets in that space. All of us collectively have a question around how much more is sensible to do versus do you put your energy and effort into starting to say should we focus on a district-wide context and it's all to do um and sorry this is the um we economist to me it's bang for back and um the return that you're giving to the community um and and so i think collectively we're all in that headspace and we'd love to have a good discussion with you on that yeah, i can just add to that so i think you know we've we have already uh, we're not starting from scratch, and we haven't already engaged the community on a lot of things. So we can we can reintroduce those who don't get down a track of things that people have already considered. Um, but absolutely important to to give people the space where they're not tarnished by political or financial stricture. Yeah. So they can yeah. come forward with ideas, yeah. and then we can start matching those up with things. But you know what? We're already done. We're already done going down the road in this space. So we are tick. Otherwise, yet great new idea. Let's now consider it. So I'm very keen to have that process. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you very much um, for for your your um, your words today, your presentation, and also for the conversation from the committee here. So I just want to clarify going forward. Um, so on a slide there is the next steps and about exactly you know what we need to do and where things are going over the next short term because we do have as, as you've mentioned a very short time frame here. <coughs> Uh, following this discussion today, we are going to be coming back to you with the core components of the draft terms of reference. So we are going to circulate that to this committee um, based off the conversation we've had today, the feedback you've given us, um, and to start to go, these are the components that we think will be in that um, terms of reference, looking for you to give us any direct feedback on that. Um, with the purpose um, or, or, or perspective that that terms of reference needs to go up to strategy ops and finance. Um, we're proposing that um, the chair of, of CES, Jocelyn, will um, work with us to table that terms of reference once you've had your round robin um, so that we can actually get agreement to it. 
and um, we'll start the process essentially. So that's why I was saying before um, to the question of can we do this quickly? Why, well, yes, we can. Um, so it's all action from here. Um, and today we just really wanted to give you guys a chance to get on the substance rather than on the detail of wording or wordsmithing so that we're really focused on the right stuff. And we will continue to do that with you because we want to make sure we make the most of your time. So thank you for that. I'm just checking to see when our next Climate and Environment Subcommittee meeting is. It's on, it's, I think it's the 19th of September. And then I'm just looking at th those dates there and I'm just wondering how are we actually going to do that? Whether we have a workshop where we can actually, um, you know, spend some good quality time um, lacking it, you know. We're happy to do that with line. you. So how, how do, does members of the committee feel about that? Okay. Uh, we'll follow up with you, um, okay, thank you. Jocelyn. Yeah, thank you. So thank you again very much for... Um, for your contributions today, and obviously this is a very important piece of work, and um, yeah, we look forward to um, basically grabbing it with both hands because we need to. Um, so now we will move on to the um, confirmation of minutes um, from the 15th of June. They're on page 21. So um, if I can move that um, these minutes are, um, are correct. Um, do I have a seconder for that, please? Glenn? All those in favour? Those against? The motion is passed. So um, we have... Hold on, I'm going to find my piece of paper. Um, so we have, we have no um, public excluded sessions today. And so now we will close with a closing karakia. Would anyone like to do that? Thank you, Janet. It's nice to see you here. Yeah, Thank you. Just to write for the last closing yeah. gasps of this meeting. Yeah, um, I've been at a hui in town around um, health prevention. So that's been really interesting. Um, so I'll close. Health. Uh, health prevention measures. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, preventative health. Kia uh, ora, te marino, kia whakapapa pounamu, te moana, he huarahi ma tato e te rangi nei. Aroha atu, aroha mai, tato ia tato katoa, homie huie taiki. Thank you very much, Janet. Thank you very much for your attendance and your input, and thank you very much for staff to supporting this meeting. Thank you. So just some extra things that yeah, impact on any of the others.